Hello everyone. Welcome to this video in the machine learning teach by doing series. In the previous videos we have looked at the convolutional neural network architecture in a lot of detail. We looked at the four building blocks filtering layer, max pooling layer, flatten layer and fully connected layer. And we saw how these building blocks are arranged to make a convolutional neural network diagram or schematic which looks like this. Usually an input image is passed through a number of layers such as a filtering layer then a pooling layer. So this is the filtering layer. Let me mark it with a different color. Yeah, so this is the filtering layer. Then we have a pooling layer, then another filtering layer, then another pooling layer. The filtering layer is also referred to as convolution with a ReLU activation function. Then we do this filtering, pooling, filtering, pooling multiple times until we have the flattened layer and then a fully connected layer towards the end. That's the convolution neural network architecture. And uh, we discussed that there are two building blocks whose parameters we need to optimize. First is that when we look at every filtering layer uh, or convolution, there are filters and the shape of the filters might be a tensor shape like this. So this, for example, might be a three by three by four filter. And uh, when we look at filters, they carry values 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. So these are the values which need to be optimized. So every filtering or convolution layer will have filter values which need to be optimized. The pooling layer does not have any values because we just take the, the pooling layer does not have any parameters, I should say, because we just take the maximum value of the input. So there is nothing to optimize in the pooling layer. Uh, the flattened layer also there is nothing to optimize. The fully connected layer has weights and biases similar to how a traditional neural network has. So there are two main layers whose parameters need to be optimized. The filtering layer which is also called convolution over here and the fully connected layer. For the purposes of this lecture I am going to denote these combined parameters by a variable which is called as W. So we will need to optimize all the parameters w so that the output here shows that it's a maximum probability of what's actually present in the input. So for example, if the input is that of a zebra and then the output has three classes, horse, zebra and dog, these parameters w should be such that the maximum probability is for a zebra and lower probabilities will be for the horse and for the dog. Today we are going to see how we optimize the weights of a convolutional neural network. Uh, this is not going to be a very deep theoretical lecture and I am not going to show mathematical calculations. This will be more of an overview lecture so that you get an understanding of how back propagation and gradient descent is implemented. As always in this series we will take a practical example for me to demonstrate that to you. Uh, later, I'll be making a more deep dive into the mathematics of CNNs. But if you're preparing for interviews and if you want to master CNN, this much part of the lecture should be enough. So uh, to understand how the weights of a convolutional neural network are actually optimized, one thing which you need to understand is that ultimately the CNN is just a mathematical function which looks like this. It takes the image as the input and uh, the weights are the values in the filtering layer and the fully connected layer. So we need to optimize these weights. So the strategy which we will be following is very similar to what we did for traditional neural networks. We first found the loss, the loss value between the predicted, what is the prediction of the CNN and what is the actual output. So we first find the loss. Let me write this here. We first find the loss and the loss depends on two factors. The loss depends on the prediction and the true value. And then what we will be doing is that we will find the partial derivative or the gradient of the loss with respect to all the parameters. And then using gradient descent routines we will be updating each parameter. So for example there is a parameter called W1. What we will be doing is that we will be uh, updating it. In every iteration, we'll update it like this. So this is vanilla gradient descent. Uh, and uh, there are, of course, advanced optimizers built on top of this, which 
uh, add momentum then there is adam uh, and there is rms prop also so using one of these optimizers which are all variations of the simple gradient descent we will iterate all the parameter values and eventually we will uh, optimize these parameters so that the loss is reduced to do these optimizations one very important thing which we need is to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to all the parameters or the gradient of the loss with respect to the parameters so the strategy which we will be implementing is actually exactly similar to that of neural networks we will find the partial derivative of loss with respect to the parameters that step number 1 and step number 2 is that we will update the weights through gradient descent methods now one thing to note is that let's look at this uh, diagram again and let me actually erase uh, some of these marks which have been made here so that the so that i can explain uh, this next step in a clear manner okay so let me again switch back to the pen okay great so now let us look at uh, finding the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights so let's say if i want to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights in this filtering layer so for that we'll need to do back propagation so i'll need to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the inputs to the flatten layer then i'll need to find the partial derivative of the pooling layer output with the pooling layer input then i'll have to find the partial derivative of the filtering layer output with the input and so on and so forth until i reach the final layer so you'll notice that there are two partial derivatives which we need if there is the if there is a pooling layer and there is an input to the pooling layer which is x and then there is an output to the pooling layer which is let's say z we will need the partial derivative of z with respect to x and uh, if there is a, a filtering layer and if the input to the filtering layer is x and the output is z then we will need the partial derivative of z with respect to x so uh, in pooling what we actually do is take the maximum of all the pixels and it turns out that it's actually quite easy to find the partial derivative of the maximum operator i am not going to go through the details of that right now but keep in mind that it's possible the second thing which happens in the filtering is that if you look at filters it's just a dot product right if i have this as my uh, input and uh, if i have a filter the filter will si slide through this input and it will perform the convolution operation which is at the heart of it just a dot product so finding the partial derivative of the filtering output with the input actually boils down to finding the derivatives through this dot product and that's completely possible so at the end the only difficult things which are new here are the partial derivatives through the max operation and the partial derivatives through the dot product and both of which are completely possible to do everything else which we see here we have already encountered in neural networks and we have already find found partial derivatives for example we know how to handle relu we know how to handle softmax and we know how to handle fully connected layers so with this we can actually handle the entire convolutional neural network architecture and find gradients as i mentioned earlier i'll be making separate lecture on the mathematics of finding gradients through the max pooling layer through the flattening layer through the uh, filtering layer etc but for now just keep in mind that uh, we just have dot products uh, for the filtering layer and maxes or the max operation for the max pooling layer and we can easily differentiate both of them so that's why back propagation is completely possible and as a result step 1 is completely possible to execute for the convolutional neural network so this is the intuition behind how we optimize the weights in a cnn so next time let's say if you uh, look at an interface like teachable machine google's teachable machine allows you to distinguish between any two types of varieties for example you can uh, distinguish between let's say if the first category is cats and the second category is dogs 
you can upload images here and then you can train this model to distinguish between cats and dogs so what's happening underneath this training process is that the weights of a convolutional neural network are getting optimized through back propagation so very important for you to keep this mind and uh, remember the layers of a cnn are filtering layers max pooling layers flattening layer and uh, fully connected layer and we do the back propagation through all these layers great so i hope you have understood this intuition and now we will be moving to a practical implementation of how we do this back propagation and especially i will show you how to do this back propagation for the filtering layer and for the dot product because it's very important to have the intuition for that so let's move to a simple example right now we'll be taking a one dimensional example so what's happening in this example is that we have we have constructed a simple convolutional neural network here in one dimension so here's my input image it's n by 1 so if n is equal to 10 let's say it will have 10 pixels like this this is my input image so x equal to a0 and then i will apply a filter here so this is my filtering layer which is k by 1 so let's say k is equal to 5 so this is a 5 by 1 filter which i apply over here and then the result which I get from this filtering operation is again 10 by 1. So let us see how this filtering actually works so that that concept is revised for you. So if I have a, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4. This is my input which is 10 by 1. Then what I'll be doing for this filtering is that first I'll need to pad. So I'll need to pad maybe 2 here. And uh, I think I'll need to pad two here with zeros. Okay, so this is my input. So if I want to find the output now, let's say if I want to find the output for this pixel, I will put my filtering, which is five by one. I will put my filtering here and then do the dot product of each value of the filter with each value in the input layer. And I'll get my first value. If I want to find the output for the second pixel i'll move my filter down and uh, my filter will then look like this my filter will then look like this then i'll i'll take the dot product again and then i'll find the value for the second pixel similarly i'll find it for the third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth and tenth so the filtering operation produces the output which is exactly the same size of the input which is 10 by 1 uh, and that's what's given by this z1 here so z1 is the output from the filtering operation and that's that's that is the same size as the input so it's 10 by 1 then what we'll be doing is we will be applying the relu activation function which leads to a1 so if anything is negative here we'll set it equal to 0 if it's positive we'll keep it the way it is and then finally we will apply a fully connected layer over here which produces my final output which is z2 and then i determine the loss after uh, my final output has been produced and the loss is defined as l so let us see how the forward pass is implemented through this simple convolutional neural network and then we will see how the backward pass is implemented so let's look at the forward pass let's say we have an image here which is a0 right then what's happening here is that we are uh, applying the filtering operation which is essentially taking the dot product of the filter values which are also called as weights with the input so as i mentioned over here we'll be taking a dot product we'll be sliding the filter through uh, every single input and we'll be taking the dot product so let's see how how it has been written here right now so z the subscript is i one is equal to the weight transpose the weights of the filter transpose multiplied by a0 and the subscript is i minus k by 2 and i plus k by 2 and there is a floor over here which means we have to take the uh, lowest integer so if k is equal to 5 this will be uh, i minus 2 and i plus 2 so what this actually means is that let's say my i is equal to 5 and i want to find the output for the fifth pixel in the input image so that will be z5 right so if i want to find that output as we saw before we will center this filter so that the center of the filter coincides with this fifth and then we'll take the dot product between the filter weights and the inputs but which inputs 
only inputs 3 4 5 6 and 7 uh, so that's why it's a0 i minus 2 which is 5 minus 2 and 5 plus 2 so this will be 3 and this will be 7 so you take the input pixels from 3 to 7 3 4 5 6 7 and you take the dot product with the uh, filter weights so that's why there is this i minus 2 and i plus 2 over here so i showed this for z of 5 right which is the fifth pixel but we'll be doing this for all the 10 pixels in the input image z so if there is nothing above that particular pixel we'll pad it with zero values if there is nothing below that particular pixel we'll pad it with zero values so that's what this terminology represents z subscript i because the pixel values i go from 1 to 10 and i minus k by 2 to i plus k by 2 because if i is equal to 5 let's say we only take the previous two pixels and the later two pixels to calculate the dot product so with this notation we will we actually represent the output of the filter operation which is z i1 and then what we will be doing is that we will be taking that output uh, so remember that the output will have the same size as the input which is 10 by 1 and then we will be doing the ReLU operation which is pretty easy we will just look at the output values whichever is negative less than or equal to 0 we will set it equal to 0 whichever is positive we will let it be as it is and then finally there is the fully connected layer so let's say the weights of the fully connected layer are w2 uh, then i'll be just taking w2 transpose multiplied by the output of the previous layer this we have already seen in neural networks so my final output is w2 uh, w2 transpose multiplied by a1 which is the output of the previous layer so this is my forward pass through the cnn but what I really want to show you in this lecture so that you can get an intuitive understanding is how we are going to do the backward pass. So let's say I want to find the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the filter weights because this is what we are going to optimize. Uh, we will also, also optimize the weights W2 but there is nothing new here. We have already seen it in neural networks. So the real essence which I want to convey to you through this lecture is how to optimize the weights of the filter which is W1. So as we have already seen to optimize the weights, let's say uh, this is W1, we'll need to do these iterations, right? W1 is equal to W1 minus alpha times. We'll need the partial derivative of the loss with respect to W1. So it's very important to get this partial derivative to do gradient descent. So we'll see how to do that. So in the backward pass, now we are going to see how to get the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the filter weights. And for that, let me actually apply uh, a chain rule. So in chain rule, we first need the partial derivative of loss with respect to a1. We'll then multiply it by the partial derivative of a1 with respect to z1. Then we'll multiply with the partial derivative of z1 with respect to w1. That will ultimately give me partial derivative of loss with respect to w1. Uh, so remember here that I'm just going to write this in a matrix representation over here. So this will be uh, the last term here is partial derivative of loss with respect to the a1 which is this final uh, partial derivative of loss with respect to a1 then i'll multiply with the partial derivative a1 with respect to z1 and then i'll take the partial derivative of z1 with respect to w1 so i'm just i've just written it a bit backwards here so that the matrix dimensions make sense here partial derivative of loss with respect to a1 then partial derivative of a1 with respect to z1 and partial derivative of z1 with respect to w1 this is the filtering layer now a partial derivative of loss with respect to a1 i will not go into the details of this because there is nothing new here we have already seen how to do this for a fully connected layer so let me keep it as it is now to find the partial derivative of a1 uh, let me go above yeah to find the partial derivative of a1 with respect to z1 let's see how to do that so if you look at a1 and z1 a1 is actually the output of the relu and z1 is the input of the relu so a1 is relu times z1 right so it looks something like this so the way we will find this uh, the way we will find this value partial derivative a1 with respect to z1 is if z1 is greater than 0 then the partial derivative will be 1 uh, because it's just a straight line and if z1 is less than or equal to 0 the partial derivative will be equal to 0 so that's how we'll find the partial derivative of a1 with respect to the z1 
but the real essence is how will you find the partial derivative of z1 with respect to uh, w1 which is how will you find the partial derivative of the uh, output of the filtering layer with the weights of the filtering layer so let's see this in a lot of detail actually and for this we will focus on uh, first let's focus on this formula here let me write it over here so z i1 is equal to w1 transpose uh, w1 transpose and uh, this is a0 right correct so if you were to find the partial derivative of z with respect to w you kind of know that only the input should somehow survive uh, but the question is that how many input values so let's say that so let's say we look at the let's say we look at this partial derivative but we look at the fifth um, we look at the fifth input so let's say I want to look at partial derivative of z51 with respect to w1 um, and remember z5 is the fifth output so let me make this a bit clear so this is my input 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so this is a and my z is the same size as a because filtering produces the same output size so what i am going to do is now i am going to find the partial derivative of the fifth 1 2 3 4 5 i am going to find the partial derivative of the fifth value of the output with respect to the weights so there is a filter here with weights w i am going to find the partial derivative of the fifth value of the output with these weights so let's see what this is so to find the partial derivative of the fifth output let's look at how that output is calculated so to calculate the fifth output we'll look at the fifth so we'll place the filter over here which is aligned with this fifth as the center and then we'll take the dot product right so basically the terms which will be involved in the dot product are x3 x4 x5 x6 and x7 and if the filter values are w1 w2 w3 w4 and w5 these are the filter values then my fifth output value will be a dot product of these two so it will be x3 multiplied by w1 plus x4 multiplied by w2 plus x5 multiplied by w3 plus x6 multiplied by w4 plus x7 multiplied by w5 so this will be w1 transpose which is the weight transpose multiplied by the input but only values 3 to 7 so if you want to take the partial derivative of the fifth output with respect to the weights then the answer will be x3 x4 x5 x6 and x7 it will be a vector of five values because all these five values contribute to the output so they will all count so if you want to find the partial derivative of the fifth output with the weights the answer will be x3 x4 x5 x6 and x7 if you want to find the partial derivative of the fourth with respect to the weights then the answer will be x2 x3 x4 x5 and x7 x5 and x6 similarly so this is uh, for the fifth this is for the fourth similarly we can do for the first output right up till the tenth output if n is equal to 10 and k is equal to 5 so that's why uh, the dimensions of this partial derivative of the output with respect to the weights are actually k by n so here you can see that the dimensions are five rows uh, and 10 columns so it, it's a 5 by 10 matrix um, and why it's a 5 by 10 matrix because for every output value there are five values which contribute to that output so for example for the fifth output value there will be these five values for the fourth output value there will be these five values etc so this is how you find the partial derivative of the filtering layer output with the weights you just look at the inputs which contribute to the output and it is very visually easy to understand and this is how actually the back propagation is done through the filtering layer of a convolutional neural network the idea is that okay the output is a product of the weights and the input right 
so if you want to take the partial derivative of the output with the weights only the input should survive but the real trick is how much of the input will survive for every output value there are five values of the input which make a contribution so for example to get the fifth output x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 all make a contribution because we are taking a dot product so that's why these five will make a contribution similarly five values will make a contribution for all 10 outputs so the derivative matrix will be a 5 by 10 matrix even if you don't understand the dimensions right now just understand the intuition behind how the back propagation is done through a convolutional layer this part has been inspired from the mit's lecture on convolutional neural networks and i really like this part because i don't think this is covered like this anywhere people just assume that they know how to do back propagation through convolutional layers but uh, very few people have this intuition like this uh, as always i'm trying to make these lectures as visual as possible without scaring you or confusing you, you with too many mathematical details in every lecture we take a practical example like this and explain if something is unclear here please post it on the uh, youtube comments and we will answer as soon as possible so with this actually we have covered all the concepts needed for you to understand convolutional neural networks we have looked at uh, filtering we have looked at uh, filtering layer in detail so we have looked at filtering layers in detail we have looked at the max pooling layer in detail then we looked at the cnn architecture in detail we saw the building blocks filtering layer max pooling layer uh, flattening layer and fully connected layer and uh, today we looked at the cnn back propagation and gradient descent and how the parameters of the filtering layer uh, and the fully connected layer how the parameters of the filtering and the fully connected layer are optimized uh, towards the end we also saw an intuition of how to do the back propagation through the filtering layer and how the only specific input survive for each output in the next lectures we are now ready to perform a hands on project in convolutional neural networks uh, so thank you everyone i hope you are liking these lectures please write down everything which i am showing here as i emphasize this a lot in all of my lectures don't just watch these videos please write down along with me so that you really understand the concept writing makes things very easy and we do not forget things after we write them thank you so much everyone and i look forward to seeing you in the next lecture